Hey everyone, uh, so welcome to episode 4. That's right, I'm still here. Uh, and apparently you are too, because I got a bunch of watches on last week's episodes. Uh, so thanks everyone who, who tuned in and, and watched, uh, for whatever or however long you watched. Uh, this week's episode is going to be a little shorter than previous weeks, uh, but I think it's just as relevant and compelling, or at least that's what I tell myself, that the, these episodes are relevant or compelling. Is that crickets that I hear? Okay, never mind. Um, so let's start with this flavor of meme uh, that I've seen around the internet for years now, uh, and I've included a few different versions of it, and I'm sure there's others, but let's take a look at these, okay? Let's take a look at these few. So when you look at this meme, what do you see? What's the main idea? And how comfortable are you with that? On the surface level, I think people will get a chuckle out of this and appreciate the sentiment that the meme appears to be communicating, right? That racism in a modern society is dumb. And if you want evidence of that, look at how everybody seems to like pandas because they're relaxed from Asian countries and therefore Asian, uh, but also black and white, or rather have black and white fur. Uh, that's what memes are for. Images often juxtaposed with banal, humorous, or ironic statements that simplify complexities in our world to very simple ideas. In this way, the meme, the meme is, are fascinating and powerful and can help people get to the core of an idea uh, or a position or a worldview. Uh, in that, it can, they can be super useful. Uh, I, as I'm sure we've all encountered memes of one sort or another uh, that it's just helped us articulate that which we were thinking uh, but did not necessarily have the clarity uh, or, or clarity of thought to produce. Um, I know that's been the case for me, right? But memes are equally damning. Uh, in, their, in their abstracting of complex ideas, they also gloss over or undermine the bigger picture. Uh, often just... Uh, just for an opportunity to, you know, just for an opportunity to play a perpetual game of internet, aha, gotcha, uh, which no one ever wins, right? So when you look at this meme, what do you imagine could possibly be wrong? Feel free to pause the video and revisit the image to think about it. Go ahead and pause it. I'll be here, I promise. Oh, you're still here. You didn't pause it. I, you should have paused it. I'm just saying. Go back. Take a look at it. No? You're not going to pause it? All right. So you're back. Um, I remember the first time that I saw this meme, and the first thing that came to mind was this. I found it interesting that as living proof that racism is stupid, they used pandas. Pandas, as a species, have grappled with being on the endangered species list for decades as a result of both environmental destruction and poaching. That is, we apparently love pandas so much that we're willing to destroy their homes and to kill them, often leaving them only places for, leaving the only places for them to live or survive is zoos. You know, the animal version of prison mixed with the reality TV show, Big Brother. This is how we illustrate our love for pandas? For racism? Fifth sounds like the perversity of an abusive partner who professes love for the partner. You're probably right. Our love for pandas is destructive and harmful to the pandas, to the environment, and ultimately to ourselves. So on the surface, this meme tells a story that it probably didn't intend to tell. And that's the story I'm going to talk about. You see, this meme represents the problem of racism in our country, much better than the creators probably realized. In our culture, we talk about racism as an individual dynamic, almost a conscious choice to disregard people of other races. That feeds in strongly to, with our individual ethic, uh, individual ethic in the United States, no doubt, absolutely. 
But it also misses the point that racism's most pernicious form is structural racism. That is, how the system blinds the individuals to understanding that they are indeed part perpetuating inequalities. And we often blind ourselves to the systematic forces by proffering it up as an individual choice or experience. Therefore, this meme is a prime example of that. To the naive viewer, they see this and may think to themselves, that's right, I'm not racist. I, I love everyone. Or they might claim, I don't see color. So the meme tricks us into thinking we're not like those people who choose to hate people of color or of different races. It reaffirms our existence and choices without raising questions. Yet, by doing so, it allows us to ignore, really questioning how we may be perpetuating racism without even knowing it. Just like we may love pandas, our way of showing that love is perverse. And just like we may love other races, we are likely just as perverse in our execution of it. We can claim we love it and therefore are not racist, right? We can claim we love people of other races and therefore are not racist or have anything to do with racism because we're not actively hating, but we are passively allowing bad things to happen, namely racial inequality. As the meme suggests, racism does exist, but it is stupid. So you can choose not to be a racist, but in knowing that there is racism, doesn't that call upon you to act in some way beyond personally choosing not to dislike other races? That is a question the meme doesn't ask in its abstracted state. It leaves you to believe everything's chill. Right? So let's take a step back and say, if you agreed that you love pandas and then realized that they are, uh, they are endangered due to environmental destruction and poaching, do you feel required to act? If you don't feel required to act, can you say you really love them? If after admitting you love pandas and finding out that they are in trouble, you go about your day and decide not to act or even to forget about pandas, how do we understand that? How is that not passively perpetuating the harm? Well, in the lingo of racism discourse, we call that privilege. And privilege permeates throughout structural racism. It allows for people to not have to see and not, or not feel obligated to act when they, they encounter features that clearly privilege, protect, and blind people to systematic inequalities of, uh, of, of races within a given culture. Here again, the meme shows us that you can love pandas, but you don't have to do anything about it. Even if you find out bad things are happening, even if you find out bad things are happening to them by humans, you have the privilege of not caring because you're not a panda or currently impacted by the negative societal effects directed towards pandas or people of different races. Instead, you go about your life saying that you care for pandas, but never challenging what that means. We can understand that this approach is akin what we as humans say, say when we say things like, I'm colorblind or I don't see race. Again, it's an endearing statement because it implies we are free from bias, which we're not, in that we treat people as individuals, not in relation to their racial makeup. Sidebar, whatever we mean by racial makeup is inevitably unclear. We know that race as a concept is socially constructed, is a socially constructed idea, but because we assumed it a real idea, for hundreds of years and codify that idea into our laws, cultural ideologies, and scientific views, well, trying to undo that is like successfully creating lines on Tetris level 2000. It's just nearly impossible. So while it is a fiction, it is one that we have accepted and woven into our society as real. 
So racial makeup is such a problematic statement and I'm frustrated that I'm using it. Moving on. So the colorblind person claims to not see color, but the reality is they do. And they do more harm by pretending not to see color than actually seeing it. Because it's not about seeing or not seeing color being or not being an individual racist. It's about understanding the fundamental structures of our society have created situations where as a result of one's perceived race, they experience quite different experiences in the United States and elsewhere within the legal, cultural, environmental, and societal side effects that mean in the aggregate, that is overall, they have less opportunity and experience more discrimination, violence, and dis disregard by all of us. So that's a lot to take from a single meme, but that's why I, had to, I wanted to do this video. Memes have become the modern means of shorthanding complexity and often used to disregard people we, dis we disagree with. However, embedded in those memes are often things that are likely way more complicated and encourage us to be a bit more mindless than we should be, especially the memes that you like. It's easy to spot the flaws in a meme that you disagree with, but can you do that with, a me with the memes that you agree with? And if so, should that give you pause to share it? All right, that's all for today. What kinds of memes have, have you found to be problematic? And I'm not talking about memes that you disagree with, but the memes that you like. Go out and explore. Let me know what you discover. What are your thoughts on today's episode? I'd love to hear them. Post them in the comments below or hit me up on Twitter at L-E-A-T-O-N-0-1. So that's all for now. See you next week. Keep watching. Keep thinking.